Hey everyone, in today's video I'm excited to share my list of Unity optimization tips. This list is a accumulation of my three years of experience in game development. I'm here to provide you with tips that I personally found incredibly useful. Now a quick heads up, I might sound a bit unprofessional and silly at times, but that's because I'm a 3D artist who decided to dive into game development one day with zero programming experience. So please bear with me. To make this video even more valuable, I will provide links to YouTube videos with additional information for some of the tips. These links will lead you to some amazing creators who have been very inspirational for me throughout my journey. So let's go to the first tip. So let's start with the basics, the hardware you're working with. If your machine is on uh, the weaker side, your Unity editor might not be performing at its best. I would recommend uh, having a minimum 16 GB of RAM and if possible storing your Unity project on the SSD. However, if you're using Unity solely for prototyping or focusing on mobile projects, hardware might not be a crucial concern. Next one, run code when necessary. Try to use events, coroutines or triggers. Uh, again, I'm not a code expert of any sort, but this one, the essential one. The general rule of thumb is to execute your code precisely when it's needed. If you find yourself constantly checking conditions in the update loop, it can significantly slow down your game. Look for those perfect moments when the code should run. You can always use event system or set up triggers to ensure it happens at the right moment. I will be adding links to useful in-depth videos in the upright corner, so if you want to learn this topic more closely, please consider these videos too. Set up a solid pooling system. Handling a rapid influx of entities like particles, projectiles, or any in-game logic is a task you should address early. That's where a good pooling system comes into play. Instantiating and despawning entities can generate a lot of garbage, which can drag down your game's performance. Creating a pooling system is an essential step to optimize this process. And the good news is, it's not that complicated. If you are interested in diving deeper into this, I would recommend checking out this video, where you can get a detailed guide. If something doesn't move, make it static and optimize occlusion calling. If an object remains static, mark it as such and ensure that your occlusion calling is well configured. Unity occlusion calling does a fair job automatically, but you can take it a step further for a better efficiency. For larger scenes or those with high poly objects that you would like to conceal, make them static and bake your occlusion here. You can also run tests to determine what's included and what's not. For more in-depth insights into occlusion calling, you can refer to this helpful video. Next one sounds more like a principle. One skin mesh, one material. This tip is especially crucial for projects targeting the wiki machines or mobile platforms. It aligns with Unity's official guideline. One skin mesh, one material. In other words, if you are designing a character with multiple materials and various moving parts controlled by bones, consider baking these components during modeling, skinning and rigging phase. Import your model as one skinned mesh with a single material. The reason behind this is that skinned meshes and materials don't match together efficiently. So if you want multiple characters with various clothes, each moving part of them will be rendered separately, and it might be not efficient enough. Use fewer materials and current render pipeline standard shaders. Here's another fundamental principle to enhance your efficiency. Fewer materials are better. Wherever possible, utilize standard shaders. Standard materials with attributes like normal maps, masks, and diffuse textures will be batched together more easily. Ensure that similar materials contain the same type of textures. 
For materials without normal maps, use the plain ones. This approach aids in rendering batches. Limit your use of custom-made shaders, as they won't batch with standard shaders due to their unique characteristics. Custom shaders are valuable when they solve specific issues. But if their purpose is minor, consider alternative solutions. Use factories for repetitive tasks. Here's somewhat abstract concept, but bear with me. When you find elements repeating two or three times in your project, it's time to consider implementing a factory for them. What do we mean by factory? Let me illustrate with the example. Suppose you have a UI element representing a keyboard buttons, and it contains images for every possible key. If you try to populate your scene with numerous instances of this prefab, it can substantially slow down your project and your game. Each element includes all these images, and when duplicated, you are essentially doubling the resources needed for handling this object. Instead, create a prefab that links a container holding these images and allows the prefab to request the correct image. In this way, you can have multiple UI prefabs in your scene, each representing the original image. The original images will be stored in one place within the initial container. This concept extends beyond UI elements, of course, and can be applied to things like level generators and scene preparation tools. It's a clever way to avoid storing every level as a separate scene. If your levels are simple enough, you can generate them dynamically using JSON or even plain text files with the seed and level generation algorithm. Cache your variables. Another common tip, especially for beginner programmers, it is essential not to repeatedly access properties or components using find or get component commands. Each time you use find, you are accessing the property or component from the outside of your script, which takes some time. If you need to access the same component in the future, it's wise to cache it inside your script. Here is a simple method. Create a variable and assign your desired property or component to it. Then, in the future, when you need to access it, you can do so directly through the variable in your script. This approach optimizes memory usage. While it may not be highly impactful in the small-scale scenarios where you're running the script once or twice in a game, it can make a significant difference when your code is running continuously, frame after frame. Compilation lag. Leave assembly definitions for MMO game development. When you are knee-deep in your project and your scripts start to multiply with the man's speed, they become intricately linked and interdependent. Every time you create a new script or, heaven forbid, recompile after altering a single one, you might find yourself twindling your thumbs as a compiler painstakingly goes through these intricate connections. This isn't a small hiccup, the frustration is palpable. The silver bullet for this conundrum is to employ assembly definitions for those specific groups of scripts. It's a clever strategy that minimizes your recompilation burden. By grouping scripts under these assembly definitions, you only need to recompile the precise group contained within the assembly definition. Now, this is a good advice if you are comfortable with coding, because it involves a bit of technical finesse. However, if you are like me, entangled in a web of spaghetti code and have desperate need for linking everything to everything, assembly definitions might seem like a bad idea. What if I told you there is another workaround? I stumbled upon this peculiar sounding assets in the asset store that promised an immediate fix. I went ahead and downloaded it. 
only to discover that this asset allows you to initiate recompilation when you need it. It's not a flawless solution, of course, but it may help you to avoid one or two unnecessary recompilation. Besides that, I haven't quite figured out how to remove it from all of my projects. So if this approach doesn't resonate with you in any way, it's perfectly okay to skip it. I certainly don't have all of the answers. In truth, the real cause of your sluggish recompilation may not be solely hinged on assembly definitions. If your scene is too complex and your hardware somewhat underpowered, and actually any other reasons, it can contribute to the compilation delay. My own journey led me to realize that in my project a multitude of hidden scripts had crept into working scene. Each time I updated any of my scripts, thousands of those hidden scripts were recompiling too. After their eviction, my compilation process turned slick and streamlined. Thus, my hunch is that unless you are running an MMO with an extensive class list, your compilation bottleneck may not trace back to assembly definitions. Optimize your UI animation. Animating UI elements with Unity standard tools can be a bit of a hassle. I have explored various methods, but my top recommendation is using twin solution like LinTwin, available on the Unity Asset Store. It's a user-friendly, efficient, and speeds up your UI animation like a breeze. If you want to dive deeper, there is a fantastic video tutorial I would highly recommend it. Create UI atlases. A quick tip. Craft UI atlases for your UI elements. It's easier than you might think. Simply group all of the elements meant for a single screen, gather them in one folder, and then link that folder to your atlas. Bingo! It is as straightforward as it sounds. For a detailed guide on this, I would suggest checking out this fantastic video. Use multiple canvases. Now, here's a tip to consider. When you move your UI element wherever through an animator or a twin function, Unity updates every other element on the canvas. This might not be ideal if you have multiple health bars or dynamic elements and static elements on one canvas. To address this, I recommend to you creating several canvases, distinguishing between dynamic and static object. While you don't need to create a canvas for each object, sorting them into a few groups can work wonders. Optimize your image resolution. Let's talk about image resolutions. To keep your UI and textures compressing more efficiently, aim for image resolution that are powers of 2. This means if you have a sprite at 2000 by 2000 pixels, consider increasing its resolution to 2048 by 2048. It might sound counterintuitive, but this power of two images are more manageable for Unity, resulting in reduced file size in the project and reduced memory usage in the end. Utilizing LOD system. For those of you who are working on the open world games or scenes with extensive details, LOD, level of detail, systems can be a lifesaver. LOD helps optimize memory usage by swapping high-poly models with simplified versions at the distance. While setting up an LOD system is quite straightforward, creating LOD meshes can be quite time-consuming. You can learn more about it here. Profiler and the Frame Debugger Optimization can be a complex puzzle, and sometimes identifying the issue can be a challenge. That's where Unity's built-in tools come to rescue. The Profiler is your trusty sidekick for tracking down scripts that are heavy on computing powers. Now, if you're wrestling with the rendering bottlenecks, the Frame Debugger 
steps in. It meticulously breaks down Unity's rendering process frame by frame, providing visual insights into each step. It can be very helpful with its optimization suggestions. If you want to dive deep into Profiler, check this video and here's the video for frame debugger. Use post effects wisely. Let's talk about more straightforward but often overlooked aspect, post effects. Well, they can enhance your game's visuals, they also come with a computational cost. If your performance profile reveals rendering delays, consider disabling certain post effects or dialing down their quality settings. Always bear in mind that some post effects can be baked, like ambient occlusion and baked lighting and even baked reflection probes. It is about finding a balance between the look of your game and the efficiency of your system. Assess which post effects are truly vital for your game's aesthetics and don't hesitate to turn off those that don't contribute significantly. Baked light. This is a follow-up. One of key aspects of optimization is understanding the role of baked light. Ask yourself two essential questions. Can your project adapt to scenes with baked light? And does your project genuinely benefit from baked light? The answer to the first question largely depends on your game's nature. In scenes with baked light, objects containing lightning data become static, meaning they can't be moved during gameplay. This approach is perfect for non-action games like puzzles or exploration-focused experiences. However, you can always find a compromise and selectively bake ambient light while keeping shadows interactive to strike a balance between fidelity and performance. For baking light efficiently, I recommend using Bakery Asset from the Unity Asset Store. It's a fast, highly customizable and offers unique features like baking light into prefabs itself. And last one, mess around with quality settings. Try to experiment with your quality settings in the project settings window. But remember not to tinker with your working project. Use a separate experimentational project to determine what settings have the most significant impact on your game's performance. Is it the quality of shadows, number of lights computable in a single frame, or perhaps a texture resolution parameter? These parameters can vary from project to project, so find the perfect combination that suits your game. Beyond the quality section, explore specific settings tailored to the rendering and adjust them to your advantage. And that's a wrap for this Unity optimization tips. Do you have your own takes on Unity's optimization process? Please share them in the comments. I will be extremely happy to find out your thoughts. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it with others and subscribing to my channel. I have plenty more to share and I would love to see you here again. Thanks for watching and goodbye.